In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the back end of one of my courses and exactly why I set it up the way that I do, how my different settings look, and also how I set up my offers for my courses to actually sell them in Kajabi. So I do have more of like a Kajabi 101 beginner tutorial on this channel. We'll put it up here and also a link in the description. But this is gonna be more of a like past that, like when I actually go to upload one of my courses, how am I setting things up in Kajabi? Like how are things structured? How do things look on the back end? And what settings I am using? And really an overview of all of, of pulling all of it together for selling an online course. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I did also want to mention that if you're interested in checking out Kajabi, I do have a special 30 day free trial link. Typically you only get 14 days for your free trial, but if you use my link, you get 30 days. And that link is in the description of this video. If you want to check out Kajabi and some of the things I'm walking through in this video. But if you look to your screen now, you're actually going to see my online course YouTube for business pulled up right here. I just wanted to talk through first, like this is the student login when someone purchases the course, what they're going to see and walk you through why I'm structuring it this way. So typically I have a welcome module at the top and that includes a welcome video and any links to any extra resources they need at the beginning. Like if there is any like community groups or workbooks, I'm putting that here for this course, we have a workbook. And then I have all the modules after that and each video lesson listed out in order. So we have like your YouTube business strategy, preparing to film, video filming, video editing, uploading and scheduling, increase your YouTube impact. So those are like the bulk that's like the bulk of the course, right? And those are all like video lessons, one after another. And then at the end, I have basically a resources and downloads module where any sort of template or download or anything like that, that's more actionable, like not a video lesson goes in this module. And I just find that to be a lot easier for students to reference and to find instead of finding like what video lesson I mentioned it in and having the link there. So I like putting all of that here. So like for this course, we have like a download that's all the important YouTube terms, YouTube content calendar template, YouTube thumbnail template, etc. right? And then as we scroll down here, I do have always one final module that kind of just wraps up the course. And uh, th for this course, I have an extra video lesson on how to launch their YouTube channel and kind of walking them how to through that in four to five weeks. And then I also always include a post that is a link to our student feedback form where they can share their feedback after they have finished the course. And then another thing I wanted to mention here is on the right hand side, there is a sidebar you can see like I have my bio right here and I also do link we usually give within our courses students access to a special discount on a few select products that either were mentioned through the course or that are just great next steps for someone who has taken the course. And so typically we give them an exclusive student discount code if they decide they want to jump into one of those products as well. So we have those linked on the sidebar right here. Okay, so now I have pulled up the back end of this course. So like when we go into courses on the left hand side in our Kajabi menu, whenever I click on YouTube for business, this is what pulls up up right here okay so this is where you kind of this is where you like literally you are uploading your video lessons and everything you want to include in your course you can create the different settings that you want for your course so I'm gonna walk you through how I've set mine up and why and so uh, on this first page here it's basically what you just saw but just the back end of it for example let's open up and expand all of them if we click on to a lesson here this is where this is a post right within a module this is where you can add the title this is where we add the video right this is where we also add a description that has all the different links that are mentioned in the course. So if they're looking for something, it will always be there. Under downloads, we also always add a copy of the slides if it is a video lesson that has slides, which is most of my course lessons. And we also add the audio version if someone wants to download that and listen to it on the go via audio, they totally can. And then we also here out under video actions, if you click on that and click on closed captions, we also also always upload closed captions for our lessons. That's something that's really important to me and making sure that if someone needs that to be able to consume the content that they have access to that as well. So that's what a post for a video lesson really looks like for us on the back end. So if we go back, there really isn't a lot of settings directly in here to change. Like if we go to settings here, there really isn't a whole lot here for me to like talk through with you. But I did want to show you inside an offer for selling this online 
online course and what that looks like and what certain settings we have set up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on one right here. I think this was, this is from the webinar. So I'm gonna go to, let's see, let's do the full price version. And if we click on the offer, I think that's where there's just a lot more settings that I can talk you through of like how we set it up to best serve our students and have a great customer experience. And so in here, if we scroll down, I, I won't have time to go into every single detail here, but just highlights that I think are really important. Number one is we do have the post-purchase email turned on. We do customize it. It's pretty similar for most of our courses, but we just make sure it has like the name of the course in there. It gives them a link to where they can log in to view the course, right? And so that's in addition to the invoice or the receipt that someone is getting when they purchase. They're also getting this email that directs them to where they can actually access that purchase. Another thing that's really important for us if we scroll down here is that we have an automation set up where when someone purchases an offer, they are added to the tag for that per offer. And we do this because for a few different reasons, but it really helps us to, because like you saw, like in that list of offers, we have so many different offers created, for example, for YouTube for business from different sales and promotions that we've done in the past. So we can track those different things, but every single one of those has this automation set up where when someone purchases YouTube for business, it adds the tag YFB purchase. And so we can easily find and segment anybody who has purchased this course if we need to in Kajab or in Flowdesk, our email marketing system. So we also have a Zap set up in Zapier where when anyone is added to this tag, YFB purchase, that it adds them to a segment in Flowdesk. So if we ever need to exclude like people who have purchased this course, if we're doing some sort of promotion, we can always do that. We don't have to manually figure out like who has already purchased the course. It's just automatic. So it just makes that process a little smoother. And again, Zapier is a whole nother beast of a program. If you guys want me to do a tutorial, on that, I totally can, but that is how we have it set up for us and how it works for us with our courses. A couple other things that have just really helped me in when we sell our online courses is if we go over to pricing, the way that I structure my pricing for my courses is if it is, if we go down here, um, I have Kajabi payment set up. I've been really happy with using it, so I'm going to continue using it in Kajabi. And you'll see there are additional payment options here. Currently, I have toggled on for like for pay in full options. So typically I offer pay in full or you can do a payment plan. And for the pay in full options, we have Apple Pay, Google Pay, or PayPal. However, if it is a payment plan option, I only offer Apple Pay, Google Pay, and Kajabi payments because PayPal is very easy for someone to cancel their payment and PayPal typically sides on the side of the buyer and it's very hard to get them back on a payment plan and figure all the logistics of that out to complete their payments. And so we, for us personally, we prefer to only toggle PayPal on for that pay in full option. I've not had any issues with that, but we don't leave it on for payment plan options. That's an important distinction that I wish I knew about earlier on. We just had so many people like canceling their payments because it's just so, so easy for them to do that without having to reach out to us about it first. And so, yeah, so that's just what we personally do. I have played around with Afterpay a little bit. I didn't see it really increase sales for my launch for this, so I haven't toggled it on since and the payment plan options in there really aren't any they're honestly worse than the ones that I offer as a business because mine are monthly and theirs are every like two weeks so it really doesn't save and it's a lot higher fee instead of that three percent transaction fee for me I have to pay a six percent transaction fee so personally I don't have that turned on right now but maybe in the future I will one other thing under here that I personally do is when it comes to like we like when we launched this offer I personally like to manually expire my offers so you'll see down at the bottom here it says time limit so whenever a uh, launch has passed like the next morning one of us will come in here and manually expire it and put like the date you know the midnight date or whatever or the date that we're doing it and then it will be actually expired so people can't keep buying it and I used to have it automatically expire by checking this box and selecting that expiration date but we had multiple times where we accidentally put in the wrong date because it can get confusing with that like 12 a.m time kind of thing and so I personally just like to go in and manually expire my Kajabi offers whenever I want them to be expired and not rely on that because we have had a few times where it's been the wrong one and expired early and then people couldn't buy it which is definitely not ideal okay and then the other two things here are upsells so upsells I could do a whole video on upsells so if you guys want me to I can but these are 
are where we add our upsells. We typically add at least a couple of upsells and downsells for every single offer. And then under settings here, I did want to mention that we do toggle on the send cart abandonment emails and our setting is set for six hours. Okay, so then once I have everything set up, then that's where you can click on get link. And then that's literally the checkout link you're gonna share on your sales page or with your audience in order for people to buy. And obviously there's so much more here. Like if we click on edit checkout, you can get a little peek on what the checkout looks like. This is where you can edit everything. We usually just have a very short description of the course and a place where they can input their payment information. And so if you have any questions about Kajabi or how to sell your online course with Kajabi, go ahead and drop a comment below. I would love to create more videos like this, walking you through how to do different things with Kajabi. I use it for primarily selling online courses and digital products. So if you're ever wondering about how to set up anything, be sure to let me know in the comments and I would love to make more videos about it in the future. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was so helpful. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel because we upload a lot of videos like this for online business owners, helping you to learn how to get visible and get paid with your online marketing strategies. And online courses are kind of my thing. So if you wanna learn more about that, we're gonna be talking about that on this channel as well. And I'll see you guys again next week's video on Tuesday. Bye guys.